everybody. <laughs> Welcome to Family Arts Day with Arts at Large. I'm here in my apartment and today we're going to teach you um, how to build your own shadow puppet theater and shadow puppets. Um, so we're just going to flip the camera around. And the first thing that I wanted to do is um, Talk through the materials that you will need at home to make this happen today. Um, but there's different options, so no matter what you have, um, you'll be able to participate. Let me just make sure my camera's in a good spot here. All right, awesome. So the first thing that you need um, is a box, cardboard box. It can be any size, um, doesn't really matter. So that's the first thing you'll need to gather. You're gonna need uh, one sheet of regular eight and a half by 11 white paper. And then you're gonna need um, a few sheets of heavier paper. So if you have card stock at home, that will work. Um, you could also use like old file folders, um, make use of, of whatever you have lying around that might be recyclable. So that's what you'll need to make the shadow puppets. You're also going to need a scissors. You'll need um, some kind of tape. Masking tape works. Um, duct tape is a little more durable, um, but really any kind of tape that you have at home will work today. You're going to need a pencil. You're going to need a light source for your shadow puppet screen. Um, it could be a flashlight, a lamp, um, really anything that you have will work. And then you're going to need um, something that's going to become the sticks uh, that you hold your shadow puppets with. And you'll see what I mean later when I'm able to demonstrate. Um, but you could use like skewers if you have something like this in your kitchen. Um, you could actually use pencils if you have those lying around as um, your handle for your shadow puppets. Um, I'll demonstrate how to do that in just a moment. What I'm going to use today um, to hold my shadow puppets is some craft wire. Um, so I have a wire and a wire cutters and I'll be showing you um, a couple different styles of shadow puppet um, and some different options so if you are really excited about this activity and want to run with it and do some even more advanced stuff um, I'll show you how to do that as well. So in order to teach this workshop today I was trying to think of some characters we're all familiar with um, so that we're all building shadow puppets from the same story. Um, so I was going through some of my favorite books um, trying to decide which characters we should do today because when you do this at home you can pick whichever characters or story that you want so if you're a fan of fairy tales you could create fairy tale puppets and act out your favorite fairy tale um so oh, i was going through um my little library at home and there are just so many good books to choose from Oh, the Last Last Day of Summer. It's a new science fiction book by Lamar Giles. So oh, I was looking at that. I thought maybe we could do that, but it's so new. I don't know if everyone has read this yet. So let me keep looking through my library. Ooh, always a classic. We've got some Elephant and Piggy. You could do that. One of my favorite authors of all time, Matt De La Pena. Last Stop on Market Street. This one is available in English and Spanish. Um, and I know that there are um, like audiobook and ebook versions that you can check out from the Milwaukee Public Library. So I was thinking about that. Oh, so many good ones. True Story of the Three Little Pigs. 
Ooh, another favorite. What can you do with a paleta? It's such a nice day. I could really use a paleta today. Another new series that I'm super excited about, Yasmin. Um, she is a Pakistani American second grader and she has a whole bunch of books out about her. These are really exciting. But again, I don't know if everyone's familiar with Yasmin. So I was looking and looking for a story that we all know. And yesterday I had to mail a letter and I realized that one of my favorite stories of all time and one that many of us know was right on my stamps. Does this character look familiar? I hope so. The Snowy Day by Ezra Jack Keats is one of my favorite stories and I know that my niece, who is in K5, loves Peter and all of his adventures. So we're gonna go with this story that hopefully, hopefully everybody knows. So um, if you don't have this book at home, that's okay. Um, I'm just gonna look at my stamps um, to kind of figure out how to make my puppets today. The awesome thing about shadow puppetry is that you don't really have to be good at drawing or painting. I'm not good at any of those things. Um, you really just need the outline or the silhouette of your character. So it's hopefully will be pretty easy. All right, so we've got Peter for later. We're gonna keep those right here. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna create our shadow puppet theater. Now I know that sounds really fancy and complicated, right? But trust me, it's gonna be really easy. So you're gonna take your box, whatever size box it might be. Mine is a bigger box. So basically what you're gonna do is we need to cut a piece out of your box which is where we're gonna put our screen. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my piece of paper. Hey everybody, it's nice to see your comments. And I'm gonna just trace the outline of my paper inside my box. So I'm taking my pencil, I'm tracing my sheet of paper. Do, 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 do. All right, awesome. So I'll show you what I just did here. Can you see where I sort of traced the paper? Now this paper is gonna become my shadow screen and I'm gonna need to tape the edges inside of my box. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna cut out um, a smaller rectangle than what I just traced. Now. If you are doing this at home with a grown-up, you could use a box cutter. That would probably make this easier to cut out your rectangle. But just in case um, people don't have a box cutter, I'm gonna kind of do this the old-fashioned way. So if you need to now, you can always ask a grown-up for help. But I'm gonna kind of take my box apart here to make it easier to cut. <laughs> feels really good to tear a box apart right now. It's kind of fun. All right, so I'm gonna pop this out. Whatever kind of box you have, you can always take it apart and just put it back together with tape. So I'll show you how to do that in just a second. There we go. Awesome. All right, so I'm just going to take my scissors and remember I'm going to cut out a tinier rectangle inside the one that I drew. So I'm actually cutting about an inch inside the line. So here we go. Awesome. So I'm about halfway there. 
I'm gonna keep cutting this out. It's a little unwieldy with the scissors, but it's possible. Hopefully your hand's not getting too tired. All right, last part of my rectangle here. Ha-ha! Done. So as you can see, the rectangle I cut out is just a little bit tinier than the one that I traced. Now, I'm going to kind of put my box back together here. So, now that I've torn it apart. Okay. Here we go. All right, awesome. So, as you can see, we now have a box with a hole in it. <laughs> um, so, what I'm going to do is, I now have this little um, flap here, so I'm just going to kind of tape my box up so that it's durable. So, that little spot where I made a cut, I'm just going to put a piece of tape right over that so it doesn't come apart. There we go, just taping my box back together. Now it's time to um, tape our shadow screen to the inside of our box. So what I'm gonna do, our shadow screen is just our regular old eight and a half by 11 white paper, nice and thin. Um, so I'm just gonna stick that inside my box. Probably easiest to do this with your box flat on your table. And I'm going to position my paper so it's covering the rectangle that I just cut out. And now I'm going to take my masking tape and tape the edges of my paper to the inside of the box. So I can show you what I'm doing. Just taping, taping the paper right in there. Easy peasy. All right. One more long piece of masking tape. So, as you can see, I've just taped the edges of my regular old sheet of paper to the inside of my box. If we flip my box over, we now see this nice, beautiful shadow screen. So, um, that is how you make your theater. Now... Um, after my workshop, if you're still having fun, I would highly recommend um, spicing up your shadow puppet theater a little bit. So if you have some fabric lying around the house, you could make little curtains to go on the sides of your screen. Um, if you've got markers, you can like decorate the outside of your box, make it look a little prettier so it doesn't look like a cardboard box. I also have some ribbon lying around that could make a cool design. So just some tips um, to make the cardboard um, on your box look a little bit fancier. But for now, I'm going to set my shadow puppet screen aside. And now it's time to make some shadow puppets. So. Um, I'm going to take my cardstock. Again, if you don't have cardstock at home, um, you can use anything that comes in the mail that's like thick, heavy paper, um, old file folders, really just any paper that has a little more thickness to it. So I'm going to do cardstock. 
And the first thing that I'm gonna make, um, in that video earlier, you probably saw Peter sliding down a hill, which is one of my favorite parts of the snowy day. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna make a little bit of scenery. Um, we're gonna make the snowy hill that Peter slides down. So I'm just gonna take my paper here and I'm just gonna draw kind of a big, fun, slopey hill. Just like that. All right, I'm gonna cut out my hill. <laughs> this is a fun part, especially if you have a younger, um, like kindergarten child at home, they could definitely draw the slopey hill um, and cut it out because it can really be any shape you want. So um, it's okay, we have this kind of hard edge, but once that is behind our shadow puppet screen, it'll look like a real snowy mountain. So we'll set our snowy mountain aside with our shadow puppet theater. Now I've got this um, leftover card stack and we don't wanna throw all that in the recycling, right? Let's try and use as much of it as we can. So now I'm going to make my sliding Peter. So as you can see on my stamps, here is the picture of Peter sliding down the mountain. So I'm just gonna kind of look at that picture. Again, I'm not a very good artist, but I'm gonna do my best. So Peter has his little pointy hat and his arms are out because he's so happy. He's sliding. Okay. His other arm is out. He's got little mittens. <laughs> okay. And his legs. How'd I do? Ooh, that, that light is bright. <laughs> so, um, oh, Nikki Kula, it's amazing. Nikki is the amazing artist who designed the Snowy Day shadow puppets for the production at First Stage Children's Theater this year. Um, so she did all of this, but much, much fancier. Um, so there's our sliding Peter that I just kind of drew looking at my stamp. And again, the nice thing is it's, it's going to become a shadow. So you don't have to, if you want to color it, you certainly can, but none of that's really going to show up once it's a shadow. So you can just do the outline of your character. So now I'm going to cut out my sliding Peter. <laughs> All right. Got his funny little snowsuit. And his mittens. All right, we're almost there. We just gotta cut out his little toesies. All right. There he is. Now, let me demonstrate the really awesome thing about shadow puppetry. Let's say I'm not paying attention and I accidentally oh, cut my shadow puppet in half. Oh no, what have I done? No need to get upset because, again, nobody's gonna see 
your actual shadow puppet. They're just gonna see the shadow that it makes on your theater's screen. So if you make a mistake, it's really easy to just get out your tape again. And you can just tape your shadow puppet back together. If you make a mistake. Good as new. All right, now, um, in my demonstration at the beginning, you probably noticed that Peter had a little face. So, I'm gonna draw a little circle where I want Peter's face to be. And I'm just gonna fold my cardstock right in half on that circle. And just the way that you um, cut out a heart, you're just gonna cut that little half circle out. <laughs> so I just folded his head in half. I'm cutting a little half moon shape out. And when I open it back up, you'll see that Peter has a little face now. Well, what he really has is a hole in his head, but once we um, get behind our shadow screen with the light, it'll look like he has a little face. All right, so that is your simple Peter shadow puppet. Now, um, I'll show you once we're behind our shadow screen, you can definitely just hold the puppets behind the screen to make them move. But if you wanna be really sneaky and make it look like um, nobody is back there being the magician operating the shadow puppets, um, you need to add a handle to your puppet. So I'll show you a couple different ways you can do that. If you have a wooden skewer or a pencil at home that you can use, um, you can definitely just tape that to the back of the puppet so that it's going up and down. What I'm gonna show you how to do today is get your handle attached so that your stick is extra hidden. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get a couple pieces of tape ready here on my table. I'm gonna take the end of my stick and I'm gonna kind of tape it so it is perpendicular to the shadow puppet. So I'm kind of wrapping the tape around my stick, pressing it down on Peter. Let me kind of show you the back of what I did here. So there's just some tape. And now, as you can see, I'm able to operate my puppet and you can't really see the stick, right? So the stick is coming towards me. Awesome. Now, another way to do this, if you want even a little bit more control, I'm gonna take my stick off, is to use some craft wire. Now, I have really thin craft wire at home, so I'm actually gonna fold my craft wire in half to make it just a little stronger. So if you have thicker wire you're using at home, um, it's probably fine just the way it is, but I'm gonna make mine even a little stronger than it normally is. I'm gonna use my little wire snips to cut it off. And you can kind of like twist it together so that it's thicker wire. Now I'm gonna take the end of my wire and I'm gonna bend just a little bit of it so it's at a 90 degree angle, like this. Awesome. And now I'm gonna take some tape and do basically what I just did. I'm gonna take that tiny little piece that I bent and put it up against my puppet and I'm just gonna tape it on.
Now, if you have some long tape and there's some sticking out the sides like it is right now, you can just kind of bend it over the edges. Again, if your shadow puppet looks kind of messy and covered with tape, no big deal because no one will be able to see that. That's why I like it. It's kind of like messy art where you don't have to be a good artist to do it. All right, so now, as you can see, I have my wire. I can show you the back of Peter. Hopefully you can see it's a little bright in here. So I just taped that tiny piece of wire to the back of my puppet. And now I have this um, flexible handle that I'll be able to kind of bend um, to help me keep my hand hidden once we have a light shining on our shadow screen. All right, so that is Sliding Peter. We're gonna set Sliding Peter aside. Does anyone have questions so far? Do I need to slow down? Are we good? All right, so now, oh, my favorite character from the Ezra Jack Keats books is Willie the dog. So, um, Willie is a, a wiener dog, I think. Um, so, what I'm going to show you now is um, how to make a shadow puppet that can move. And so, again, we've got some paper left here. So let me cut Peter out. We'll just set that aside in our recycling pile over here. But I've got some paper left. So again, I'm just going to do an outline of a doggy here. So, you can always um, kind of look up whatever whatever dog shape you want to do. Uh, let's see, I'm going to give my dog some ears and a cute little tail and some legs. He's running. And another leg. Okay. Hopefully that's good. As you can see, I don't have a ton of artistic skills. So whatever you can do, just do your best outline of a dog. And what I'm going to do is... We're going to make it so that Willie's head can move up and down. So I'm going to just draw a little line at Willie's neck here. So we're going to cut out our dog puppet. This is making me wish I had a real doggy at home right now. Our neighbors have dogs and we like to watch them outside in the yard. They're so cute. They're always digging up the flowers. All right, I'm gonna cut out his tail. And his little ear. The nice thing about this activity too is a lot of our libraries are closed across the country right now. So if you can't get your, some of your favorite books, this is a great way to um, act out the story and still be connected with those stories, even if you don't have the actual book. So if you can look up some of the illustrations from your favorite stories, I bet you could easily um, make those shapes into shadow puppets just like I'm doing now. All right, so we're getting closer. Willie still needs, he needs some legs. He 
while I'm cutting out Willie, I will let you know that Arts at Large has some really cool stuff happening every week. Um, every Saturday, they have Family Arts Day, which is why I'm here with you today. Um, Arts at Large is helping keep artists employed and busy and um, sharing their skills with the public. So you can tune in to their Facebook page every Saturday for workshops just like this, family friendly um, skill sharing from a lot of different Milwaukee artists with different talents. And every Wednesday at 7 p.m. they have been doing a live stream story time. So again, if you, um, you know, have have a limited number of books at home, or maybe you're sick of all the books you have at home and you've read them a million times, you can't get to your library, you can always um, check out the digital resources at your public library. There's tons of books where you can like read along um, as you look at the book. They're audiobooks, they're even like movie versions of some books that you can check out for free um, with your library card. But there are also so many cool um, digital virtual story times happening. So every Wednesday at 7, you can tune in on Arts at Large Facebook page to um, see some different local celebrities reading some of your favorite children's books. I think that this week's was Hair Love. Um, amazing book, amazing short film. So they're picking really great books and um, it's just a great way to, to stay connected right now. Oh, I'm so close. I have one little paw left. Excellent. All right. So I have cut out my Willy silhouette or outline. And now, once again, we're going to cut our shadow puppet in half. So remember that little line I drew right on Willy's neck? We're going to cut on that line. It feels mean, but it's going to be really cool when we're all done. All right, now that we have our two pieces, we're going to need to attach them so that Willie's head can kind of move up and down like this. So what I'm going to need to do is put a little hole through both of my pieces. So I'm going to draw just a little dot so as you can see there's my little dot and here's my other little dot so those dots are going to be where we connect the shadow puppet so that's where we need to put a tiny little hole now there's different ways you could do that if you have an awl or a tool like that and you can easily just poke a hole through, you can do that. I was having a hard time finding something like that in my house. So what I did is I just folded my shadow puppet like I did before. I took my scissors and I made the tiniest little snip in my shadow puppet. So now it's got a tiny, tiny little hole where I need one. I'm going to do the same thing on my other puppet. Ooh. There we go. All right, so now I've got my two little holes, but if you have like a mechanical pencil or something like that, um, you can sometimes use that to make a hole pretty easily. All right, so I've got Willie's body, Willie's head. Each one has a little hole in it where we're going to attach them. Now I'm going to take my craft wire that we used earlier and I'm going to cut about this much off. What do you think that is? Like maybe two inches? All right, so I've got my tiny little piece of wire. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna feed the wire through the little holes that we just made in Willie's body and the hole in Willie's head. If I can find the hole. Oh. 
there we go. Got it. Okay. So, as you can see, we now have wire coming out both sides of our puppy dog. So, um, this is going to be a hard part to show. Let me see if I can get really close to you. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to lay Willie flat with the wire coming out both sides. And I'm going to take my pencil and trying to find, maybe I can hold the phone here so you can see. I'm going to stick the pencil right on that hole that I made. And now I'm going to take my wire and I'm going to wrap it around the tip of my pencil. <laughs> Can you kind of see what I just did? So I'm just holding the pencil and I used it to wrap the wire around it. Now, if I hold my shadow puppet, I can pick up my pencil and you'll see that there's a little coil of wire sticking out of Willy, which I can just press down now. All right, now we're gonna flip Willy over and we're gonna do the same thing on the other side. So I'm gonna take the tip of my pencil. I'm gonna put it right on that tiny little hole I made where the wire is sticking out. I'm gonna take my wire and wrap it slowly around the tip of my pencil. Take the pencil out. Press the wire down. Voila! So, now you can see we have like a little wire coil on both sides of Willy, and this is going to help his head to move so he'll be able to sniff the ground and howl and all that good stuff. So, now just like before with our sliding Peter puppet, we're going to just um, take some wire and tape it to the back of our Willy puppet. But we are going to do two of them. So we'll have one on his body and one on his head. So again, I'm using this thin craft wire. So I'm going to double my wire to just to make it a little bit stronger. But if you have pencils or chopsticks or wooden skewers or something like this at home, that will work too. Or you can use your hand and just hold your puppet. So many options. All right, so I've made a piece of wire about this long, doubled it up to make it stronger. I'm gonna bend it at that 90 degree angle that I made before. And I'm gonna use my tape. I'm gonna use duct tape this time, but you can use masking tape, duct tape, scotch tape might work. Whatever you got. All right. So I'm gonna take my wire and I'm gonna tape it on. And if it sticks out a little bit, you can always just wrap it right over the edge. All right. Awesome. So as you can see, I just taped my handle to Willie's body and now we're gonna do the same thing on Willie's head. So we'll grab one more piece here. Again, my wire, it's not real great. It's kind of thin and flimsy and I want it to be a nice strong shadow puppet handle. So I'm just gonna fold it in half to make it a little bit stronger. Bent it at a 90 degree angle and I'm going to take that 
little bend. And now we're gonna tape this second handle right on Willie's head. Oh, my tape is a little bit big. I'm gonna tear it in half so it's a little bit tinier to fit on his head. All right, I've got some sticking out that I'm just gonna bend over the top of his head. And if you hold it up and your wire seems flimsy, you can always add a little more tape to make it stronger. So I'm gonna do that right now to mine. All right, so if we look at the back, we've now got two little wire handles sticking out that we've taped to Willie. And if we hold those handles, you can now see that we are able to make Willie's head move up and down a little bit so he can sniff the ground, he can howl. So it'll make this puppet seem a little more alive once we get it behind our shadow screen. All right, it's almost time to move into um, the dark shadow cave where we will do our shadow puppetry. But first, I just wanted to show you if you have um, an older child at home or you're just a super uh, puppet savvy adult, um, there's another way that you can do this that's really cool. Let me get some of my supplies out of here now that I've made a big mess. Um, if you have any permanent markers, a pen and some Duralar at home, um, or if this is something you can easily order or safely find in your community. Um, Duralar is just kind of like thick, clear um, plastic stuff. It comes in these big sheets. I have a couple pieces left over from yesterday. So what you can do is take your pen and just like we've been doing with our cardstock paper, you can um, make an outline of Peter. I'm gonna make mine extra fast here. So can you see that? It might be hard to see. I just drew a little outline of sliding Peter like we did earlier. And now you can actually add color to your shadow puppet. So I've got a red permanent marker here. Unfortunately, this doesn't work um, with regular washable markers. But if you have a, a child who can be trusted with permanent markers, then um, you can go ahead and color in Peter's snowsuit. Oh my gosh, he looks so cute in his red snowsuit. So yeah, I'm just gonna do a quick demonstration. But as you can see, I'm just coloring this in. Um, so whatever permanent markers you have, you can color and decorate your puppets to give them that splash of color and detail. And I'll show you the one that I made yesterday. You'll end up with a shadow puppet um, with color on it. So there's Peter in full color. When I attached my handle to this shadow puppet, I used scotch tape, which is um, see-through, uh, so that you'll kind of see once I show you on the screen. If you use your duct tape or your masking tape, it kind of looks like a big dark blob once you're doing your shadow puppetry. So. The scotch tape helped a little bit so that the light can shine through this puppet so that you can really see all the color. Um, so yeah, you can cut out whatever you make on that Duralar plasticky stuff just like we did with the cardstock. But I know you've all been watching me cut a lot of things out today, so we won't do the whole thing. But I just wanted to show you that if you wanna go really wild um, and if you have that 
artistic talent where you can really illustrate um, and you have a knack for color. Unlike me, I like to do just the outlines so that I can make them all messy and cover them with tape. Um, but you could do this with your favorite characters. Try this other material. All right, have we done everything we need before trying out the shadow puppet? We have our theater, we have our snow mountain, we've made sliding Peter, we made Willy, and Willy's head can move, and we have our alternate sliding Peter in color that I can show you. So the next step is to set up your shadow puppet theater and your light source. So if you're just joining us, we're here for Family Arts Day with Arts at Large, and um, I'm showing you how to make a simple home shadow puppet theater and shadow puppets to act out your favorite stories with your family. So you'll need a light source. Um, it could be a flashlight, it could be a little clip lamp, um, a regular lamp. There's a lot of different things you can use. The other thing I haven't mentioned yet is if you don't have a box lying around your house to make a little shadow puppet theater, you can easily do this by hanging a white sheet up in a doorway um, or even using a shower curtain. So if in case you missed this part, you can totally still do this um, with a shower curtain or um, a sheet or whatever you have at home. But we're gonna use our shadow puppet theater today. So I'm gonna bring my masking tape, my shadow screen, and I'm gonna gather the puppets that I have made and my snow mountain. And now I need to move into a dark, Area. So obviously there's a lot of sunlight coming through these windows. It's going to make it hard to see your shadow puppets. Um, but if you have a bathroom where you can turn the light out or bedroom that you can make dark, um, that's going to help a lot. So my trusty assistant here is going to help um, move the phone into our dark shadow puppet cave so that you can follow me and I'll show you some tips. All right. Hello and welcome. All right, so what I have done here is I just cleared off a couple little tables in my house. Um so one is going to hold my shadow puppet theater, and the other table is going to hold my light source. So um, I have a little clip light that I set up here that's just plugged in back here. But I also have a flashlight, so I'll kind of show you what both options look like. Whatever light you have at home will definitely work. So I'm going to take my shadow theater, and I'm going to set it up kind of at the edge of my table. You want to have um, a little bit of space to move behind and below your shadow screen. But I'm going to kind of show you that the closer you can get your puppet to your screen, the better. So um, it might be a little harder if it's like way down here. But you can kind of try some different things out and see what works best for you. When I tried this yesterday, I realized that because I use such a shallow box, it gets a little bit wobbly. So I'm going to take a little bit of my masking tape and I'm just going to tape this to my table so it stays on there. All right, now the next thing we're going to do, does that help? Mm -hmm. <laughs> is we're gonna set up um, our little snowy mountain. So this is our scenery um, that we can add to create the world of the snowy day. And I'm just gonna add a little tape to this side of our mountain. And we just wanna make sure that 
it will show on our screen. So I'm just taping that to one side. And I'm going to tape the other end over here. Now there's all kinds of other cool scenery you could make. I know there's a tree in the snowy day, so you could have a tree that you make that comes out this way. Um, there's lots of buildings, so you could make some buildings. And if you want to do more than one scene from the story, you can always just take this piece off and then put um, the scenery for your next scene up. So, I'm first going to give you a little sneak preview of what this looks like from behind your Shadow Puppet Theater. So in a moment, we'll turn on the light so you can really see what it looks like. Um, but I'm going to want to try to hide my hands so that my audience doesn't see the shadow of my hands sticking out. So I'm going to kind of stay off to the side and Peter's going to go wee and disappear. Pretty easy right now if your wire or your skewer feels like it's getting in the way you can always um, adjust where you taped it to make it a little bit easier the reason I like the wire is that I can kind of bend it to help me hide my hand so if I bend it down it helps me kind of hold Peter up here nice and close to my shadow screen Willy, we already kind of saw we attached two handles so that Willy's head is able to move free. So when Willy runs after Peter, he can stop, he can sniff the ground. So I'm using my left hand to control Willy's head while my right hand controls his body. So you can play around with how that moves and if your head isn't moving very well, you can look back at your little coil and sometimes if this is too tight, you might just have to pull it away from the puppet a little bit. But you can experiment with that to make sure that um, his head can move nice and easily. And ooh, wow, mine is actually moving much easier now that I did that. So as you can see, Willie's running, Willie's running. Now again, if your puppet is far away from your screen, it's gonna look blurry. The closer you get to your screen, the crisper your image will be. So that's why we add these handles. Um, it helps us get the puppet nice and close to our shadow screen um, without our hands getting in the way. And last but not least, we made a different version of Peter um, in full color. So we can do the same thing, have him slide down the mountain, and you should be able to see all of the lovely color that we added. So, what you wanna do is get your light, whatever your light is, um, a little further back from your screen. You can, again, play with what works for you and the stuff you have in your house. Um, again, you could always hang a sheet or have some people hold a sheet instead of using a screen like this. But for today, we're going to show you how to do this with your little um, home shadow puppet theater. So what's really cool is all you have to do is turn on your light. Maybe my assistant can show you what that looks like. So now let's turn our other lights off. So we're going to make it nice and dark in here. All right. Okay, we're making it as dark as we can. So now we have, this is our clip light that is shining on our screen. You can just show the screen now, I think. Okay. Thanks, trusty assistant. So that's what the clip light looks like, but if you use even a tiny little flashlight like the one I showed you, it's really, it's nice and bright, and it's um, focused right at our sheet of paper. So as you can see, 
that thick cardstock that we used um, is creating this cool shadow of the snowy mountain that we made. And what's fun about shadow puppetry, the first thing you have to teach yourself is that you can't just walk between the light and the screen. And anything you do between the light and your shadow screen will be seen by your audience. So if you want to really seem like a magician, <coughs> you and your family can practice staying hidden while you're acting out your story. So I'm getting way down on my knees or sitting on my bottom so that my hands are way down here, hello, below the shadow mountain. And now you can see that sliding Peter, wee, can do all kinds of fun stuff on the shadow mountain. Now again, you'll probably, when you're practicing, have some times when your hand comes up and is showing and you can just keep practicing with your family to try and stay hidden or maybe sometimes your head gets in the way, whoops. Um, so you just keep practicing on staying hidden so that only your puppets are showing up on your screen. Now we have Willie who can come running after Peter. I'll show you the Peter that's made out of Duralar and <coughs> marker. So if you want a Peter in color, this is what that looks like. Now, trusty assistant, if you want to come back here mm -hmm. and just show them just how close I'm getting to the screen. So the further your puppet gets from your shadow screen, the blurrier it's going to look. So I'm getting very, very close, touching my screen or almost touching my screen as I move my shadow puppet around. Can you show us uh, moving it far from the front, the blurriness? Yes, I definitely can. Good idea. So this is my puppet close <clears throat> to the screen. It's actually, oh, yep. Oh, you saw my hand. <laughs> so I'll have to keep practicing. So the puppet's really close to the screen, and as you get further away, your puppet's gonna get bigger. <laughs> so if you want a giant Peter, that actually looks really cool, but um, it's <laughs> gonna get blurrier the further away you get. But there's some fun things that you can do with that. So if you want, um, like, if maybe you make a dragon shadow puppet or a dinosaur shadow puppet, you can make it really tiny, but if you hold it far away from the screen, it's going to look huge. So that's kind of a fun thing that you can do and get used to doing. So now we have a big dog. Or a little dog. <laughs> All right. That is our shadow puppetry workshop for today. Um, oh, perfect. And it's been exactly an hour. Um, could you set that back in its spot, actually? Mm -hmm. Thank you so much. Um, first, are there any questions that you have before I say goodbye and leave you to your own crafting? <coughs> if you have questions, feel free to type them in and I'm happy to answer any questions that you have. Um, again, I'm Kat Woodkey. I'm a theater artist and musician in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. And Arts at Large is a, a local organization, nonprofit, 
They um, do amazing residencies in schools um, so that artists can work with local kids. And they um, asked me to do this Family Arts Day today. So super grateful to them for continuing to make opportunities for artists at this um, tough time for all of us. And just to let you know a little bit more about them, um, if you're able, um, we'd love for you to make a donation to Arts at Large or share um, their story times, share Family Arts Day, um, visit their Facebook page and give that page a like um, just to help get the word out to our community that there are all these cool arts opportunities still happening. Um, additionally, every Wednesday night at 7 p.m., they're doing a story time. This week was Hair Love. I have not watched it yet, but I'm super excited to go back and find the archive video of that live stream to see the story time for Hair Love, one of my favorite books. Um, every Saturday at 10 a.m., there are going to be workshops like this one today. They're about 45 minutes long. And, um, oh, awesome. Oh, I love seeing what you're working on. A Shadow Puppet Quidditch match. Amazing. I would love for you all to take photos um, or videos of whatever Shadow Puppet story you make today and share that with me. That would make me so happy. Um, so, yeah, every Saturday, 10 a.m., there are going to be interactive artist workshops, just like what we've done today. And if you want to find out more about Arts at Large, um, their website is www.artsatlargeinc.org. So um, I encourage you to visit their website, find out um, what's happening virtually, and once it is safe for us to gather again, um, go check out their space. It's really cool. I know they're always having really awesome work, like interactive workshops like this. So um, great organization that's doing a lot for our community right now. So have I forgotten anything? I don't think so. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. Um, I hope you're all staying safe and staying home and um, send in love to everybody. I hope that this was a fun diversion for your Saturday morning. And um, feel free to message me if you have any other questions. Um, but yeah, I'm excited to see what you make from what you learned today. Thank you so much for tuning in. Bye.